Hello, in today's video, we're going to look at a very important concept in statistical inferences, the concept of continuity correction. A continuity correction is an adjustment made on statistical data when a discrete distribution is approximated by a continuous distribution. For us to appreciate this concept, we're going to look at the main differences that exist between the discrete random variable and the continuous random variables. The first point to note is that a discrete random variable can only take whole number values. And the reason for it taking whole number values is because it can only be counted. You have, for instance, the number of cars passing a road at a given time interval. You could have values like 12, 13, 14, or any other whole number. On the other side, you have continuous random variables that can only take ranges of values. So these values that are in ranges are obtained by measurements most of the time. For instance, you could be taking the weights of children and you are rounding them to the nearest whole number. In that case, a range of 12 to 14 would include all real numbers because you could have 12.1, 12.01, 12.5, 13.5, 13.001, .5, and so on. In the second difference, we have to note the way the probability values are assigned to each value in each case. You have, you have, for instance, in the case of discrete random variables, there is a PMF, a probability mass function, f of x, usually a discontinuous function that assigns probability values to each of the values that the discrete random variable can take. And to have the probability of a particular value, for instance, p of x equals 12, it would just be f of 12. And to have the probability that x lies in a given interval, it is simply the sum of the individual probabilities of the discrete random values that lie in that interval. In the case of a continuous random variable, we have a function PDF or the probability density function f of x usually a continuous function that assigns probability values to intervals of values you have for instance p of 12 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 14 and for you to have that probability it will be difficult to sum them up because we have an infinite number of uh, uh, real numbers that fall within that range so the only means by which we can get the probability is by integrating the probability density function from 12 to 14 should be noted that for a continuous random variable, it is not possible to find the probability of having a particular value within that interval. So it is designed, the probability density function is designed in such a way that you can only find the probability of a value occurring within a given range of values. And that is why if you are finding p of x equals 12, it gives you 0 because the integral from 12 to 12 of f of x dx is 0. Okay, so from here we have to note that the continuous random variable that is used to estimate discrete random variables is the normal distribution. And the graph of the probability density function f of x of the normal distribution is bell shaped so it has the shape of a bell as you can see on this diagram it is in such a way that if you find the area enclosed by the whole graph and the x-axis it will be equal to one and to find the probability that x lies between a and b we find the shaded area which is enclosed by the probability density function the x-axis and the vertical lines at a and b and you should note that whether the boundaries are included or not included, that area will not change. So the notation of the normal distribution is that x follows the normal distribution with parameters mu and sigma squared, where mu is the mean of the distribution and sigma squared is the variance. As already said, the probability that x lies between a and b, as shown on the diagram, whether a and b, the boundaries are included or they are not included, you would have the same probability. And that is why p of a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b is equal to p of a strictly less than x strictly less than b and it is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx now we also have to note that the discrete random variables estimated by the normal distribution are the binomial and the poisson distributions and for these discrete random variables to be estimated using a normal distribution they have to meet certain conditions the conditions are that for the binomial distribution with parameters n standing for the number of trials and p standing for the probability of success we need to have that np is greater than or equal to 5 and n cure where cure is the probability of failure is also greater than or equal to 5. when these conditions are met the binomial distribution is then approximated by the normal distribution with mean np and variance np cure in the case of the Poisson distribution with parameter lambda, lambda being the mean or the average number of occurrences per unit interval, if lambda is greater than 20, then the Poisson distribution will approximately follow the normal distribution with mean lambda and variance lambda, since for the Poisson variable, the mean and the variance are always the same. Now, 
it should be noted that if the above conditions are met for the discrete random variables to be approximated using the normal distribution, their probability density histogram closely approximates to that of the normal distribution. For us to clearly understand that, we look at this diagram, which has discrete random variables 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And on the vertical axis, I have the probability mass function. Now, the spikes sitting on each data point represent the probability of that data point occurring. And the height of the spike is directly proportional to the probability that that particular value can occur. Observing critically the diagram, we can see that there is symmetry in the heights of the spikes. And this confirms the fact that once your discrete random variable meets certain conditions, it will be approximating to the normal distribution. Now, for us to better appreciate the closeness with which this diagram relates to the normal distribution, we are going to draw a characteristic probability density histogram for this discrete random variable. So I will start by labeling the vertical axis this time f of x representing but the density function. So we have the density function. Now, one characteristic of a histogram is that the various bars always have areas that are directly proportional to the relative frequency or the probability density of the particular value that the bar represents. And so in the case of 20, which is an integer, I cannot draw a bar of a particular width without having to extend that integer on both sides. So I will need to extend 20 to the left by 0.5 and to the right by 0.5. The choice of 0.5 is because between 20 and the next integer, which is 21, there is a unit difference between them. And so half of a unit should give 0.5, which now justifies why we have to use 0.5 to extend each integer on both sides. And this has to be done for all the integers that are involved in the data set. Now, in the case of 20, the boundary to the left becomes 19.5, while the boundary to the right is 20.5. And from here now, I can be able to draw the characteristic bar of each integer. I would have to connect a bar to reach the tip of the spike. In the case of 20, which now lies between 19.5 to 20.5, a unit interval, which would occur for all the bars of the rest of the data sets. I would also connect the bar for 21 to cover the characteristic boundaries of 21. What we have simply done at this level is to extend each integer to cover an interval rather than just covering a data point representing an integer. And this is actually what we call continuity correction. Remember in the beginning of the video, I presented the differences that occur between discrete random variables and continuous random variables. Continuous random variables occur in ranges. So for me to now represent 20 as a continuous random variable, I will need to extend it to the left by 0.5 and to the right by 0.5 so that it makes just one unit and it will now represent the width of the bar because area has to be involved in this situation of constructing a density histogram and this is as i've already said what we call continuity correction because for area to be involved there must be continuity in the diagram so once this is done we can now connect the data points to appreciate the characteristic bell shape of the normal distribution that is approximately presented on the data so you can see the approximate nature of the data set when i superimpose the bell shape of the normal distribution on the histogram. It should be noted that the total area covered by this histogram, which is a density histogram, should be one. And the total area also covered by the bell shaped curve of the normal distribution is also one. Now, at this point, we have to appreciate the reason why we have to modify the values of the discrete random variable to decrease boundaries to the left by 0.5 and increase boundaries to the right by 0.5. This is to ensure that we are dealing with continuous random variable instead of a discrete random variable. Because if I am using the normal distribution to estimate probabilities, I would need to carry out integration. I'm carrying out integration because the value of the probability has to be the area enclosed by the curve. And that curve is supposed to be continuous. If I were using but the discrete random variable values, it would not be possible for me to integrate because these values are just data points. They are whole numbers, they are integers, and they are lying on the probability mass function, which is not a continuous function. So in order to estimate the probability that x lies between 20 and 26, these values being discrete random variable values, I would need that extension to the left by 0.5 and to the right by 0.5 of the boundary values in order that I deal with a range of values rather than uh, specific integer values. And that is where the concept of continuity correction comes in. The fact that we have to convert integer values into ranges by extending the lower boundary value to the left by 0.5 and the upper boundary value to the right by 0.5. Now, to better understand why an integer could be extended to the left by 0.5 and to the right by 0.5 is the case where we are measuring values of a continuous random variable. Take, for instance, the weights of children, which are measured to the nearest kilogram. So if I'm measuring weights of children to the nearest kilogram, a weight of 22 on my data set could have come from this interval 
of 21.5 less than or equal to x less than 22.5 because any real number in this interval when rounded up to the nearest whole number will always give 22. Now when we consider the probability that a discrete random variable x can lie between 20 and 26 and we want to estimate it using a normal distribution we would now consider but the probability that that random variable lies between 19.5 this lower boundary and 26.5 this other upper boundary and as already explained on the curve it represents the area enclosed by the curve which should be the integral from 19.5 to 26.5 of f of x dx and this is usually obtained from tables due to the fact that the probability density function of the normal distribution is a complex function which is not easy to integrate now before we conclude we have to look at the continuity correction trick that means what you would always use each time you are doing your continuity correction to get it right without having to memorize. The first point to note is that to do a continuity correction, you would have to first determine the lower and the upper bounds of the interval that is involved in your calculation. From there, you subtract 0.5 from the lower bound and add 0.5 to the upper bound, as we saw in the previous diagram. So to better understand, well, there is a table here. So if I have a discrete random variable of x equals 20, that I want to estimate its probability using the normal distribution, I first determine the boundaries. So that integer 20 is assumed to have a lower bound of 20 and an upper bound of 20 as well. So since I have my upper bound now, my continuity correction will simply be the subtraction of 0 of 0.5 from the lower bound and the addition of 0.5 to the upper bound. So that x now lies between 19.5 and 20.5. Note that in all the continuity corrections, I have ignored the equality sign because the continuity correction permits us to now use but the continuous random variable the normal distribution which obtains probabilities by the area enclosed by the curve and when you want to determine the area enclosed by the curve the boundaries of the intervals do not count again now consider the interval 20 less than x less than 26 the first thing i will do in order to do the continuity correction is to determine the real boundaries so 20 to 26 boundaries not included means we are dealing with the numbers 21 up to 25 inclusive so my lower bound being 21 it means I will subtract 0.5 from that lower bound and I will get 20.5 while the upper bound now will be 25.5 when I add 0.5 to it. In the case of 20 less than x less than or equal to 26, it means I'm dealing with numbers from 21 to 26. The lower bound being 21, I subtract 0.5, I get 20.5 and when I add 0.5 to the upper bound which is 26, I get 26.5 and that gives my continuity correction as 20.5 less than x less than 26.5 when i take the interval 20 less than or equal to x less than 26 it involves the numbers 20 to 25 inclusive and so when i subtract 0.5 from the lower bound which is 20 i will get 19.5 less than x less than 25.5 when i add 0.5 to the upper bound in the case of x less than or equal to 26 i have interval negative infinity to 26 negative infinity is left as it is my interest is on the upper bound which is 26 and when i add 0.5 to that upper bound i will get x less than 26.5 as my continuity correction in the case where x is less than 26 i have the boundary lying between negative infinity and 25 and my interest again here is and my interest again here is the upper bound which is 25.5 i have to add 0.5 to it so that my continuity correction becomes x less than 25.5 in the case of x greater than 20 my boundary values should be 21 and positive infinity. My interest is on the, the finite boundary there, which is 21. When I subtract 0.5 from the lower bound of 21, I will get x greater than 20.5 as my continuity correction. Finally, when I have x greater than or equal to 20, in that case, I have the boundaries between 20 and positive infinity. I'm interested in the finite bound, the lower bound of 20, and so I'll subtract 0.5 from that lower bound, and I get x greater than 19.5 as the continuity correction. So with this, I hope your knowledge of continuity correction has been improved. And if you did learn something from the video, please give it a thumb up, like, share and subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos. Thanks for watching.